Hi, this is Terry QT with Deep Sea Foundation, and I am in Chicago with Dr. Karen Horton of San Francisco. We are at Plastic Surgery, the meeting. And I wanted to talk to Dr. Horton this morning about tug flaps. We all know that there are a lot of options in breast reconstruction. Uh, some patients would rather have implant surgery. Some patients would rather have the tummy tissue and do the deep flap like I did. But Dr. Horton, um, I have a lot of patients tell me they're very happy coming to you for their tug flaps. So that's why I wanted to interview you and have you tell us about it. Okay. So I'll let you take it away. All right. Thanks, Thanks for you. being here today. Oh, thanks, Carrie. Yeah. So tug flap is capital T-U-G, and it stands for transverse upper gracilis. It is a free flap, meaning it involves microsurgery. The transverse part is the direction of the skin paddle. So uh, if you picture, if you're grabbing your inner thigh fat all the way from the front, all the way around to the back, <clears throat> and in plastic surgery, we call that the buttock roll. That's the area that we take. Okay. The upper gracilis part of it means we're gonna take a little piece of muscle together with the flap. And so it's not a true perforator flap, which is what a deep flap is. The mm -hmm. P in DIP is perforator. Uh -huh. A tug flap is actually a myocutaneous flap. Okay. And I've always been a very strong advocate for not sacrificing major muscles of the body. So mm -hmm. I explained to patients, we can take the whole gracilis muscle, which is a teeny little strap muscle, one of your inner thigh muscles. Mm -hmm. We take the whole muscle all the time to reconstruct a smile in facial reanimation for facial paralysis, or say you have a mutilating injury to your flexor or extensor tendons, you can transplant the whole muscle, hook it up to tendons, and you can have function. So taking a little piece of the muscle, there's no deficit. And, and I know in plastic hmm. surgery, I hear the, the phrase a lot, form and function. Correct, so, yeah, yeah, form and function. So okay. uh, the tug flap, just when I'm talking to patients, I usually call it the inner thigh flap, but uh -huh. in publications, it's called the tug flap. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me about recovery and, um, you know, time of recovery and the difference in recovery, say, between um, an implant with using, t or I'm, I'm sorry, using implants versus, right. you know, maybe using uh, your tummy tissue. Sure. So when we do a tug flap, obviously there's a donor site. We take it from the inner thigh. So in addition to a wound either on the breast or underneath the breast, there's a wound in the inner thigh area. Uh, in San Francisco, I keep patients in the hospital anywhere between four and seven days, okay. and during that time, they're just kind of resting and relaxing. Right. There are inner thigh drains that are in a little bit longer than the breast drain. So the reason for that is when you get up and you start walking around, there's friction there, mm -hmm. and you tend to produce a little bit more fluid. Okay. Uh, when we first started doing tug flaps, we looked at our complication rate, and up to 30% of patients had a fluid collection in the inner thigh area called a seroma. Mm -hmm. So we've started keeping patients immobilized a little bit longer. I use a special compressive dressing kind of similar to a liposuction dressing okay. and by keeping the drains in at least two weeks our seroma rates about five percent or less wow. which is pretty good so so I'm thinking too the you know fluid always they call it dependent and it yes. flows downward and mm -hmm. I would think that for a tug flap does that make it a little more I think so but I think also just it's the area of the body okay like when you do the deep flap it's you know you can wear a binder you can have a little bit more compressed but there's a little bit more motion in the inner thigh area. That makes complete but sense. But to answer your question about recovery, I say it's after any major surgery, it's about six weeks before you're exercising, your body is basically going to be cannibalizing its energy to heal. So you might not really feel like you're yourself with full you know, energy for at least three months. Okay. And it's always a year before the scars are mature. Okay, well that's good to mm -hmm. know. And so, is physical therapy involved in all, at all after tug flap? Not or? usually. I have had a couple of patients kind of self-refer to physical therapy. Okay. They felt they wanted a little bit of extra stretching and strengthening, but not sure. really. Generally, you can just get back to your usual activities at six weeks, knowing that you might feel a little bit tight. Um, but I've had patients do like yoga instruction and do high kicks dancing wow. at a month, a little bit too early, but yeah. they admitted that they did. So the key is to find a very well-qualified plastic surgeon, microsurgeon, who mm -hmm. does this frequently. Mm -hmm. I know you do. Mm -hmm. um, and also to follow your doctor's orders. Yes, <laughs> that's important. Ladies, follow your, follow your doctor's orders because I, I do hear some physicians say that women get back to their activity a little too soon and not quite as compliant as they should be, and that can yeah. cause more problems. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But the tug flap is a great option for women who don't want implants. Um, maybe they've already had their tummy tissue harvested. Maybe they've already had a tummy tuck. Uh -huh. um, if they, if you tend to be more pear shaped, if you have more fat in the inner thigh area, it's a really good alternative to the deep flap. 
I prefer it over buttock tissue, like mm -hmm. the gap flat, because when you think about your inner thigh fat, it's soft and squishy, mm -hmm. just like tummy fat is, whereas gluteal fat tends to be more firm and fibrous. So that's true. For some patients, it's my number one choice for them, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's a nice option, and it provides a really, really nice reconstruction result with a really nice shape. We take the cone shape, we cone it, so mm -hmm. we have a really nice conical breast shape which tends to have a little bit more projection than a deep flap often. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Well, good to know. Mm -hmm. So we have options for even autologous reconstruction. Thanks for talking to us about the type of lab today, Dr. Horton. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.